Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. I ask you that you bless every person in this hall. Let your hand be on their life so powerfully, Lord. Oh, we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you to this service, into our hearts, into our minds, into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory we give you all the glory tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the glory, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let's give the big Lord Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is hard to stop. Amen. Amen. Make a joyful shout. And clap all your hands, you people. It's normal to make noise in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, it's a blessing to have a good worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's so good to be back here again. Thank you, Pastor Artur, for having oh, me Artur, here. We meet a lot, but not so often in, our, in Armenia. <laughs> but it's so good to be here. <laughs> See Brother Bagrat a little bit more. And you brothers here. And all of you. <laughs> Amen. So it's so good to be here. Last time I was here, I think, was five years ago. And uh, it's so wonderful to be here again. Uh, in Uppsala, we really love this church. And I want to greet you from Pastor Wolf and Birgitta. Greet you very, very much. I know they pray a lot for you. We stand together like this. So big greetings from them. I was talking this morning with Carl Gustav Severin also. I said I would just also make Carl Gustav Severin here. He greets you. Now he's right now in Ukraine. And he said that 
It's such a powerful anointing today. It says this is just like when we started in the 90s. And, and we really believe for a new start and well, you know, rather a new wave in Ukraine. And, and we see God's blessing already there. So it's wonderful. Amen. Amen. So my name is Christian. Uh, Bagrat has already mentioned who I am. Bagrat <laughs> Arsen has said so when yes. But uh, I'm, uh, I am. <laughs> but I am Christian. Yes, Christian. Uh, I have my, I have one wife. <laughs> four, four children. You wonder why I say one wife. When I lived in Kazakhstan as a missionary, a taxi driver asked me, how many wives do you have? I said one. Yes, I Only one? I have two. I said, yes, So I said, I thought, what shall I say now? I said, if you have the best wife in the world, you only need one. Yes, I said, yes, I said, yes, I said, yes, I said, yes, so I'm very fine with one wife. <laughs> so I have four children. I got married in 1988. So this summer we celebrate 25 years. And when we had been married for about two years, we, have, we received two things. One daughter and a calling to move to Siberia. So, so we moved to Siberia. I passed for Mexico. Nothing. Ninety-nine, ninety-nine, ninety-one. Hazari Nari Nasun Mekta Vakan. To Abakan. We lived there for a year. And uh, in the end of that year, I felt that you know we can't move back to Sweden now. We have to go further into Siberia. And the Lord opened a door to Magadan. And anybody heard about Magadan? Anybody heard about Magadan? Anybody heard about Magadan? Anybody heard about Magadan? Have you seen Brilliant of Narukah? They say like, I'd kino vor vorka Adam and the Zerk. Prishak nam Magadan. Yek mesmot ap Magadan. Nien, nien, biluchik nam. Watch, watch, duk lavi lavi yek mesmot. But we went to Magadan. Vesmen ginasing Magadan. They have a, they have a, a saying there. Gides antera especia sa svaskunen. Kalima salataya planeta. Gides Kaliman davoske molorake. Divinatset mesetsev sima. Vortev tasirko am iz zemere. Astalniye leta. Iz menatsat sa amare. <laughs> so we moved there in August. <laughs> and the snow was falling, snow was falling already. Maros. <laughs> but we learned something. <laughs> Always find something good in life. <laughs> so when it was 25 minus and hard wind, <laughs> we say, Slava Bogo. Then we moved to Khabarovsk, <laughs> to, to Kazakhstan, and then to, to Moscow, 95. To start a Word of Life church there. We lived there for three years. And moved back to Sweden. And since then I've been working with missions. And I'm so happy to, to be in Word of Life church. I came to Bible school in 1985. And, and as soon as I came there, I started to sense that I had a calling on my life. And very soon I started to understand I was called to missions. And even if we did not have a missions work back then, we had a missionary calling. And the Lord fairly quickly led us into that. And mission is really one of the trademarks of Word of Life. We have received something that we have to share with the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad to be in Armenia. Because I know Armenians are ready to, the Armenians are a global. Tell your neighbor. I am global. Yes, global. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor. And you are global. Do I less global? Somebody told me. 
a friend of mine, he had been talking to an Armenian. And he asked, how many Armenians are there in the world? And he said, 12 million. Okay. And how many lives in Armenia? Two million. Really? Yeah, but you know. You know, Armenia, that's our office. So I think you have all the traits that you need to successfully say yes to the Great Commission. Tell your neighbor again. I'm global. Yes, global. I'm culture mission. Yes, can Hallelujah! 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 Woo! Praise the Lord. Park Tiroche. Missions is a great adventure. Through the years, I've been experiencing so many great things in the different fields. This May now, we're celebrating 30 years since Word of Life started in Uppsala. And if we look back on all these years, there's so many things that have happened. But we are not getting ready to retire. We are getting ready to refire. Amen. Anybody wants to refire? Amen. Enthusiasm is not something teenagers you should have. I think I think we can grow in enthusiasm. We can grow in passion. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We, do, we shouldn't grow comfortable. When I was in Afghanistan, Afghanistan I talked to this missionary. In Afghanistan, it's not an easy place to live. His co-workers have been kidnapped by the Taliban. And and it was, a, it was a world news back then. It's, it's dangerous. It's tough. But they were there. And he said like this. Jesus comforts the afflicted. But he also afflicts the comfortable. But he also afflicts the comfortable. Amen. Amen. When we go through tough times, he comforts us. He strengthens us. He gives us new courage. But when we grow comfortable, he starts to make us uncomfortable. You can't say amen, say oy oy oy. Amen. Amen. It's easy to get comfortable. Yeah. Ayo. Yeah. You got a new sofa, you like it? Yeah. 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 And after a while, all you do in the sofa is sleeping. God wants to bless you with a good sofa. But he doesn't want to change you in it. Amen. 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 Tonight, I'm, I'm going to preach about missions. Yes, Are you okay with that? Normal, da. Tell your neighbor again. I'm global. Yes, global. I'm getting ready to hear. Yes, <laughs> Amen. There's a big harvest out there. Amen. And, and Jesus said, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. What is the solution? It's, it's more workers. The harvest will still be big anyway. We can't make the harvest smaller. We need more workers. I like what Pastor of usually says. You know, we don't pray like this. Lord, here am I. Aha, yes. Send my neighbor. <laughs> and I would like to add to that. <laughs> if people pray that prayer, <laughs> God hears that. Your neighbor's prayer. You can tell your neighbor, <laughs> I prayed for you already. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to preach about missions tonight. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said like this, Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says, I'm going to build a church, and it's going to be built on a rock. It will not be shaken. It's going to be strong. It's going to be overcoming. Not even the gates of hell shall Shall be able to prevail no, against So Jesus, what he is focusing on when he's in the Gospels, he's going to the cross, but after the cross and the resurrection, he's going to do something. He's going to build a church. Amen. So that is the central theme for Jesus. So when we come into the book of Acts, been on the cross. He redeemed the world. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He paid the full price for our salvation. And 40 days later, he goes to the Father. And he tells the disciples, you just wait here in Jerusalem. But before he goes to the Father, he tells them something. He says, go to the whole world. Go to the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. So go to the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He also said, go and make disciples of all nations. So get people saved and make good disciples out of them. That's how you build a church. You fish them and then you shepherd them. You catch them and then you bring them up in the Lord. And you build them together. That's what it is to build a church. So, so on the day of Pentecost, in chapter 2 in the book of Acts, God pours out his spirit and he anoints the church that is born in the same instant really. He, born, he gives birth to the church <laughs> in a supernatural way. <laughs> the church is not the result of a committee. <laughs> Peter did not gather the other disciples. <laughs> hey, brothers, <laughs> what shall we do? <laughs> Jesus went to the heaven, to heaven. <laughs> and we are here. <laughs> what shall we do? Let's start a church. That's not how it happens. The church is born out of heaven. The church is born of God. It consists of people, but it's connected to God. And it's an habitation for God even. So at the day of Pentecost, God pours out his spirit and he gives birth to the church. Amen. Amen. And this is vital. I believe when we have to understand mission in the right way. You know, we are charismatic, we are Pentecostal. We believe in being spirit-filled. We talk with new tongues, right? We believe the gifts of the Spirit, the supernatural leading of the Holy Spirit. And it's very easy for our type of Christians to read the book of Acts and we see the book of Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit comes, tongues of fire, storm winds, new tongues, the supernatural. Peter started to preach about prophecy and visions. And, and we say, wow. And then we just read through the book of Acts. And we're looking for tongues. We're looking for prophecies. Dreams and visions. The gifts of the Spirit. The miracles and signs and wonders. The guiding of the Holy Spirit. And even the preaching of the gospel. 
and we can read like that. But I believe there is more to it. I believe that that is also the birthplace of the church. And I really believe that that understanding decides if we will be successful or not in missions. What is missions? Some would say it's the preaching of the gospel to every people, every people or every person. But I would like to add something to that. I would say that mission or the Great Commission is the preaching of the gospel and the expansion of the church into every culture. It's not only that the gospel has been preached, but the church is expanding. Amen. If we shall fulfill the result needs to be that there's a church established there. Amen. So if, if we look at missions in the book of Acts, we see the outpouring of the Spirit, which is the equipment. We cannot build in a human way. We need a supernatural equipment. But when we read the book of Acts, it's not only a series of evangelistic outreaches and campaigns. It's the birth of the church. It's the expansion of the church. And the fact is, the church becomes a base for missions. The church is born to be a base for missions. And, and therefore, for it's very important that the church is not slumbering, is not complacent about missions. But there's a fire burning. There's a living vision. Paul said like this. I was not disobedient to heavenly vision. What was that vision? It was to preach the gospel to other peoples. And in the church, we have to have a vision for missions. When I lived in America for a year, I was part of a church. And it said above the end, of the, the doors you're exiting. And it said, you're now entering the missions field. Amen. Amen. It's good to remind ourselves. When we leave the church, we're entering the missions field. And the mission field starts here and goes to the ends of the earth. Amen. But the church is not only a base for missions. It's the goal of missions. Amen. Amen. When the Lord spoke to our church in Uppsala, to go in the late 80s, about going into the Soviet Union. It was not only evangelism, but it was to establish the church. To plant the church. Amen. So the, the church is the goal. The Great Commission is not fulfilled unless the church is planted and established in the mission field. Amen. Amen. And I will preach about four churches tonight that show different sides of this. The first one is Jerusalem. And you can go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. If you forgot your Bible, borrow your neighbor's Bible. And tell him to bring the two next time. Acts chapter 2. And we read from verse 42. What has just happened here? The verses before this, Peter has been preaching the gospel about Jesus. People are cutting their hearts. And they say, what shall we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized. And then they are baptized. And in verse 41 it says, these that were glad, who gladly received the word were baptized and that died about 
3,000 souls were added to them. They were added to the church. And in verse 42, they continued steadfastly. They continued steadfastly. Amen. Amen. They continued steadfastly. That's the key for, for good spiritual life, by the way. <laughs> continue steadfastly. Amen. Amen. So what did they continue steadfastly? In the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. So what do we see here? In one day, a church is born out of a crowd in an evangelistic meeting. They suddenly form a church. I would say this is quite an accomplishment. And if we would read the following verses, we see that very quickly they start to meet one another's needs. They meet in the temple, they meet in the homes, and they have a very, very strong and powerful church life. So the Jerusalem church, it becomes a modal church. There's so much we can learn from this. From verse 42 to 47, you have the most important functions of any church. And it was in, in order from the beginning. And the result was, in verse 47, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. Continuous growth. Continuous growth. It grew every day. It says daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this church functions well. It's sound. It's strong. It has a breakthrough in Jerusalem. Uh, you know, there's much resistance. But they cannot stop this church. And the, and, and, the, and the opposition to the church. They don't really know how to handle this. They arrest, they arrest Peter and John. They whip them. Threaten them. And then the church says, Oh Lord, give more power. Give more power. <laughs> And they have more miracles. And, and they, they preach more. And the church grows and grows and grows. So we can learn very much from this church. When we are building our church. Amen. This is also the mother church. When the church in Jerusalem is born, that's not only the birth of the a local church in Jerusalem, but that's the beginning of what is today the worldwide church. Or we, or we could call the universal church. Amen. Amen. They have one problem though. They have problems to break out of the borders of Jerusalem. They have very much successful success in Jerusalem. And in chapter 6, they're growing so fast. They cannot even take care of all the people. So they put seven deacons there. And the church continues to grow. But what had Jesus? Jesus said, go into all the world, go to all nations, you receive power to reach Jerusalem, Judea, 
Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But no, nowhere we see that they are planning for reaching out outside Jerusalem. They are very good at building local church. But for some reason, it's hard for them to break out of their own borders. But there is one man helping them with that. His name is Saul. <laughs> he was so called to missions that he started the first missions movement before he was saved. But So he started a persecution. In an act of chapter 8. We see all the believers are scattered. And now finally, they start to preach outside Jerusalem. They preach everywhere. They are preaching on the run, you can say. And then you have Philip, one of the deacons that were feeding the Greek-speaking widows. He, he ends up in Samaria. Or what to do? Well, I preach about Jesus. I'll pray for the sick. And there are miracles and signs and wonders. And God started to shake that city. So what happened? Well, it happened. It happened what they were already anointed for. They did not have a conscious strategy to go out. But God helped them through Saul. It's not the most comfortable way. But obviously it worked. And then finally, God looked at Saul. He seems to be quite a wholehearted guy. <laughs> I think I can use him. So he got saved. And then you really can talk about mission stories. After 10 chapters, finally Peter, the main leader of the church, through some quite much conviction from God, a vision three times, angelic visit in Cornelius' house, he finally understands, I, I might have to come and preach to them. He comes into the house of Cornelius. As a Jew, he's not supposed to enter. But he talks about Jesus. And suddenly the Holy Spirit starts to fall again. Like in the upper room. And he says, hey God. Hold it. These are Gentiles. And God says, mm, I know. <laughs> and he just poured out the Spirit. So they start to prophesy. They start to speak with tongues. And they were baptized. And Peter said, Hallelujah. And then he sent, sent a mail down to, to Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The Gentiles received the gospel. And the Jerusalem answered. Are you crazy? They did not understand. So for the entire half chapter, they're trying to solve this. And finally they understand the gospel is for the Gentiles as well. Amen. And that is a very important step in the church history. Still the Jerusalem church the Jewish church had problems reaching outside the Jewish world. When they left the territory of Israel, they still only preached to the Jewish people. They had already solved the theological problem. So what, what kept them? Maybe it was a cultural problem. Sometimes we just have habits. Sometimes we just have, have, have ways of thinking that just keep us from crossing barriers, cross into other worlds. But Jesus, he called us go into all worlds. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. The gospel fits everywhere. Word of life works in, in, in Protestant countries. Word 
word of life works in Orthodox countries, in Muslim countries, in Hindu countries, in Buddhist countries, it works everywhere. Hello. Hello. It works everywhere. Amen. 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 So sometimes we are the ones that put the limitations. Let's go further. So now we come to Acts chapter 13. Please go to Acts 13. So now we come to the next step in the development of missions. So Saul was saved, and he went up to, to a place called Tarsus, and, 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 and Barnabas has, has uh, come up to Antioch, where some Gentiles actually got saved. Antioch was one of the biggest cities in the Roman Empire. And it was a bridge between the East and the West of the Roman Empire. Very much immorality. Lots of religions represented. The armies and business people, all the trades people, they would travel through the city. It's a very cosmopolitan. And, and cosmopolitan. their people, non-Jews, started to get saved. So Barnabas, he goes there and takes care of this. And then he remembers, yes, Saul, he's up in Tarsus. This would be good for him. So he brings them there. Guys, and some other people come there as well. And, and in verse 13, in chapter 13, if you read 1 through 4, please. So Barnabas went from Antioch to Tarsus. Barnabas went from Antioch to Tarsus. Barnabas went from Antioch to Tarsus. Սրանք եւ Պորտիրոչը պաշտոն էին մատուցանում եւ ծոն պահում սուրբոքին ասեց ինձ համար որոշեցեք բարնաբասին եւ սողոսին այն գործի համար որ ես դրանց կանչել եմ այն ժամանակ ծոն պահեցին աղոտ կարեցին նրա վրա նրանց վրա ձեռք դրեցին եւ արցակեցին So while they're worshiping the Lord they're ministering to the Lord they're fasting before the Lord the Holy Spirit takes an intensive says, separate unto me Saul and Barnabas for the work that I call them to and I'm so glad it didn't take them 10 years to understand same week same days they sent them away they had a different mentality they were not stuck within their cultural barriers. They already lived in, a, in, in an open culture. And they were used to see people traveling. So they just took a boat and went to Cyprus. So what is this church? If Jerusalem is the mother church, Antioch is the sending church. Can you say sending church? Sending church. When, when, when the word of life started in Uppsala 30 years ago, the Lord spoke to us. This is an Antioch church. You are called to send. My pastor Ulf, he says like this, I'm not interested to see how many I can gather. I'm interested to see how many I can send. Amen. Amen. So very early, we started to send missionaries. We started to send teams. We have had through the years 7,000 people going to 50 countries on teams. Yeah. Who are these people that go? Yeah, they're nurses, bus drivers, industry workers, bank people, lawyers, whatever. 
Some of you might have seen on a picture something. It does not really look like a, like a traditional church. We could have built it, you know, more like a church like. But, but there was an idea. Let's make it look like an airport terminal. Because we're going in and out all the time. We have preachers going all sorts of directions. Believers going all the way. Bible school students. Cell group leaders. It's easy to go to the missions field. Amen. Amen. We send young people for three months Six months, nine yes. months. Yes. They want to check if they have a missionary calling. And we send them to work with other missionaries. Yeah, we send them to work with other missionaries. 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 We send them to work with other Do I say in the cellus? Global celli. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting more and more globalized. Make sure it's at all available, available global. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 14. That's George Hoska. And Paul says like this. Yeah, but still, Paul says special. How shall they then call upon him whom they have not believed? Artish pes kanchen vor inch avatatsi. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without the preacher? Amen. Amen. We need somebody to preach. How did you get saved? I would say 99.9% in this room you were saved because somebody shared the gospel with you. And if it was not a person somebody had printed a tract that you read. Amen. Amen. So, so, so the preacher is needed. But the next verse it says, "How shall they preach unless they are sent?" How shall they preach unless they are sent? I'm so glad somebody was ready to send me. I had a calling. I wanted to go. And in the beginning, I saved my own money. And started to go on trips. But then finally, I would have to do it full time. And I'm so glad that I had the pastor that the missions is important. So we're going to make missions budgets here. We're going to take missions offering. We're going to spend a lot of money on missions. And through the years we have spent very, 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 very much money on missions. And we are so happy for that. Because we have invested in eternal souls. Amen. 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 So I really believe a church can catch a mission's vision. To be a sending church. What does a missions church do? First of all, they pray for missions. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 56 says, verse 7, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. It's not only a house of prayer for my personal needs. But for all 
all nations. Al bollor az geri amar. So when we pray, there are many for make our to make. Urish az geri amar. We're making a change in the spirit of the world. Is this make hokevor ashkarum popokhutsun enk berum. And things will start to open up. Yev baner sksum en batsel. We also pray for the missionaries. Noi pes make our to make missionerneri amar. We pray for the traveling preachers. Make our to make chana parortok karuzishneri amar. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed. Yes or no? To be sent out from a praying church. Vorovete ugarkvats em agotok yekegetsuk. Sometimes when I and my good friend Carl Gustav are out, out preaching together. Yer pemen yes yev im lav enkere Carl Gustav ve yev ulish tega karuzum enk. Sometimes we have a very hard schedule. Yev gites unenum enk shat zara bernevats grafik. Short nights and long days. Gites karsh gisher yev kar ashkatan kain osh. And sometimes Carl prays like this. Yev yev por yer pemen Carl la espesi agotum. Lord. Let somebody there at home pray for us. We have learned the blessing of a praying church. In Romans 15 verse 30. Paul says to the Romans. Strive together with me. By praying for me. Աղոթելով ինձ համար 15:30 Այնպես որ աղոթ քնի չորսում Եթե նույնիսկ գտնվում եք տարբեր աշխարհագրական բաժինում մենք ուսուսի կանգնում ենք իրար են եւ միասին օգնում միսիոներներին Հալելույա Աղոթող եկեղեցին Ինչ է անում միսիոնական եկեղեցին բացի այս ծրանից Եթե նա հավաքում է միսիոներներ Որ տեղից ենք սկսում Սկսում ենք դա կիրակ we teach the children the great commission երեխաներին ենք սովորեցնում միսիայի մասին sometimes small children երբեմն փոքր երեխաներ 5 6 8 years old 5 6 7 8 տարեկան they receive a mission calling նրանք միսիոնական կան չեն ստանում and then they get ready for it եւ պատրաստվում են այդտեղ դրա համար ամեն and then we train them եւ հետո մենք մարզում ենք նրան bible school ասվածաշան դպրոցում working in the church գիտես եկեղեցում աշխատելով միսիոնական դպրոցում and then finally we can send them out եւ այնուհետեւ վերջի վերջում ենք նրանց ուղարկում ենք then they also need financial support եւ նույն Ես նրանք կարիք ունեմ ֆինանսական օգնության։ Ամեն։ We give to the missionary. Դրա համար մենք տալիս ենք միսիոներական գործի համար։ տալիս ենք միսիոներներին։ We send them out. Մենք ուղարկում ենք նրան։ Not only spiritually. Ոչ մենակ հոգեվոր ձևով։ But we support financially. Բայց նույնպես ֆինանսապես օգնելով այդ գործին։ Ամեն։ And there are so many other things as well. Եվ նույնպես կան շատ տարբեր ուրիշ բաներ։ Practical help. Պրակտիկա պրակտիկ օգնություն։ You remember Paul? Դուք հիշում եք Պողոսը։ He writes to to Timothy. Նա գրում է Տիմոթեոսը։ Please send John Mark. Խնդրում եմ ուղարկիր ինձ մոտ հովանես մարկոսին It would be good for me to have him here. Նա շատ լավ կլինի որ հիմա իմ կողքը սլինի And it's getting becoming winter. Որովհետև ձմերն է գալիս So let him bring my coat. Եվ դրա համար գալուս թող վերարկուս էլ բերի Plus the books. Գումարած դրան գրքերը I'm in jail I need something to read. Որովհետև ես հիմա բանտում եմ կարդալու բաների կարդալու կարիք ունեմ Amen. 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 So practical help. Այնպես որ պրակտիկ օգնություն Care logistics. Հոգ and many other things yev shat banesh iravabanakan oknutyun it's important that the church amena karevor bane uzum em asem to be a sending church vor yekeghetsin haskana vor inke pet klini ugar koch yekeghetsin 1995 1995 tvakan the world of life church in moscow gides mek sksetsink moskvai kyanki khos yekeghetsin and as we were praying yev vor mek agotum ek lord told us tere khoses mesen make it a spiritual home for the moscow people gides inch ases vor sa toglini hokevor tun moskvai martkants hamar make it a training center for believers bay sa toglini havatatsialneri hamar marzvan kentron and a base for missions yev misiai hamar baza So we started in 95. Դրա համար մենք սկսեցինք 95 թվականը։ We already had the Bible school. Արդեն ունենք աստվածաշան դպրոց։ In 96 we started the second year. 96-ին սկսեցինք երկրորդ տարին դպրոցին։ And we made it a mission school. Որը որ միսիոնական դպրոց էր։ 2 months practice. Երկու ամսվա պրակտիկայով։ And Rune Boris who were here last week. Եվ գիտես Rune Borson որը անցած շաբաթ աշտերը։ He was working with the mission school. Նա աշխատում էր միսիոնական դպրոցում։ And then we sent them out to to on 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 uh, two months. Եվ նրանց այնուհետև երկու ամսով ուղարկում էինք։ To Caucasus, Kovkaz, to Central Asia, Kentronakan Asia, to Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. And they came back. Եվ նրանք վերադառնում էին։ Երկու ամիս 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 Now there are groups there. Եվ ասում են հիմա այնտեղ խումբ է ձևավորվել։ Մարդիկ են փրկվել։ We have groups. Մենք խմբեր ունենք։ What shall we do? Ինչ անենք մենք։ Yeah, we can lay hands on you. Եվ մենք ասում ենք, կարո՞ղ են ձեր կնես։ I will send you back. Դնել ձեզ վրա ու ետ ուղարկել։ So then we send 20 people. Եվ գիտես 20 մարդ մենք ուղարկեցինք այդ ժամանակ։ Right after the Bible school. Մենք անմիջապես աստվածաշան դպրոցից, հետո հաջորդ տարի։ After the mission school. Միսիոնական դպրոցից հետո։ We had a missions conference. Միսիոնական կոնֆերանս ունեցանք։ 
and then the whole church we went down our own knees and we committed ourselves we would be a missions church we would pray for missionaries we would pray for missions we would give to missions we will raise up and train believers we will do everything we can we don't have the money but we are going to do it Within two months, our finances had grown to 67 percent. God met our need. And we sent out 50 missionaries more. So before we were three years, we had sent out 70 full-time missionaries. How could that happen? It was a vision. It was a focus. It was important to us. And that's when we were ready to sacrifice for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I really believe that God wants us our churches to be Antioch churches. That we have a vision to send people out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next church. Ephesus. Ephesus. If Jerusalem is the mother church and the model church, and Antioch is a sending church, a vicious church. Antioch is a penetrating church. Paul went on his first journey. And then he turned back to his home base, Antioch. And then he went again to the same area in, in today's Turkey and visited the churches and then he comes down to Ephesus and he starts to preach, preach there people get filled with the Holy Spirit they start to speak with new tongues they start to prophesy it says that they had unusual miracles I like that that means there must be usual miracles hello uh -huh. if he had unusual miracles there must be some usual miracles also God wants miracles to be usual they had healings they had deliverance he was breaking magic occultism and he started this Bible school. In, in Acts 19, verse 10, he says he was teaching for two years in the school of Tyrannus. And all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus. Both Jews and Greeks. So, he had done two trips already in the same area, tried to fill the region with the gospel. But when he comes to Ephesus, he comes to the regional's capital. And working from there, he more efficiently reaches the whole region than when he was traveling inside the region. And he builds up a very strong work here that has a long-term impact. When we work with missions, we are working according to this principle. We don't only believe that we are Antioch churches, but we want to make sure that when we build centers, the centers can fill the whole region. Amen. 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 So when we go to missions, we don't just want to start many, 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 many small churches. We want to build strong bases. And this takes long time. But they last a long time. An evangelistic campaign, it lasts for a couple of days. But many times, 
But the fruit also lasts for a couple of days. But you know, when you build centers like this, they can penetrate the whole region. They can fill the whole region. And they can have long time in power. Amen. 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 Now not all churches can be you know, a full-fledged Antioch church to have all these functions Still every church can have a vision for mission. Not all churches are like in Ephesus church that can have an impact in the whole region. But we can still be a part of that vision. Philippi is a great church. And actually that's the church that Paul is the most happy about. When he writes to the Galatians, he is angry. He hardly greets them. Who has bewitched you? But when he writes to the to, to, to Philippa. I mean, he is kissing them all through he their letter. He is very happy with them. So what made him so happy? Let's go to chapter 1. Are you still here? Are you still global? Do let's global is there. Amen. Amen. Philippians 1. Philippians make. Verse 3. I'll wait for you to, to find it. Yes, Philippians 1, verse 3. Philippians make Yerek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Go can you think, think about that? Every time he got, he was reminded of them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He is happy about them. Always in every prayer of mine making requests for you with joy. He is happy with them. And why? Verse 5. Here is the answer. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. It says here, fellowship in the gospel. Does it say fellowship? Yeah. Yeah. Not like someone. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship. Who had the part? Another way to say this is partakers. I thank you for your partaking in the gospel. You can also be translated for your partnership. What is the partnership? What is two or more joined together? They're not just visiting one another. But they join together to get something done. Amen. Amen. And the word is here in Greek is koinonia. That's, it's a very strong word for, for fellowship. I'm grown up on a big farm. And when I was young, in the autumns we brought in the harvest. We had about 500 acres of fields. So I was driving a tractor. And, and my father's cousin was driving the combiner. And, and we, were, we were working usually 15 15, 18 hours a day. To get, to get it in. What were we doing? We were working like crazy. Now, 30 years later, when we meet, he says, do you remember? We had a good time together. We had a fellowship. 
And in the defense confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers with me of grace. We work together. We have fellowship together in the heart. And you also get the same grace as I get. When they support the Paul, prayer-wise, when they supported Paul, and they supported him financially and in prayer. They were working together. And the reward he would get, they shared with him. Then in chapter 4, he spends half the chapter talking about, you know, how many times you helped me. Not only once, not only twice, but regularly, from the first day until now, now. And you have helped to fill my needs. So I can preach the gospel. So thank you. But what makes me even more happy is that you will get a reward for it. So what can we learn from this? If we cannot be the model church, we can still join in the vision for it. If we are not the full-fledged Antioch Church. We can work together with it. Same thing with the penetrating church in Ephesus. Not every church can be that. Some churches are called to penetrate Some towns, some villages, all of them can join in the same mission. a partner church. They can be like Philippi. They are partners from the first day until now. Amen. Some churches, they can send many missionaries. Some churches can maybe send a half a missionary or 25% of a missionary. Let's just join together with others. The most important thing here is we catch the vision for mission. And there's a place for everybody. Amen. Amen. So Paul talks about, the, we, we can read about all these churches here. But we also see one more thing. When Paul writes to Rome, when Paul writes to Corinth, he writes to Corinth, you're in within our sphere. But we are going to the regions beyond you. He always wants to go to regions beyond. He he to the Romans. I will pass by Rome. On on my way to Spain. I go 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 to Spain. We're soon getting into the Holy Communion. But what I preach here tonight, we're just going to take a few minutes. Just go before the Lord. We live in the time with the greatest opportunities to preach the gospel. Airplanes. Satellite TV, internet, internet, MP3, MP4, MP4, we have opportunities that no generation before us, but God didn't give us all these techniques for our entertainment. He didn't create these planes for us to go on vacations. And he wants to use all these 
this means Գիտես նա օգտագործելու է այս բոլոր միջոցները for the preaching of the gospel որպես է ավետարանը կարողանակալ Let's close our eyes դրա համար եկ փակենք մեր աշխարհը Hallelujah thank you Jesus Հիսուսին Amen Amen Thank you Jesus Everything Amen in starts with that that we can see it Երբ մենք կարող ենք God said to Abraham, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, look to the west, all the land you see, I have given to you. Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to heavenly vision. What had Paul seen? What did he see? What did all these other missionaries see? They saw the same thing as Jesus saw. A great harvest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just lift our minds to you right now. We still our hearts before you. We belong to you, Jesus. We are bought with a price. We are created for a purpose. Help us to find our purpose. So we don't waste our lives on useless and meaningless things. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. We want to live for you, Jesus. And we want to live for the Great Commission. And we just ask you, Lord, that you renew our mission's vision. We thank you that we can stand here in Armenia on the brink to a whole world part of the world where the gospel has been preached so little. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you will open these nations and you raise up workers, a whole army of workers that will go they will go to these people that sit in darkness. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for raising up strong churches that have a mission's vision, passion for vision, a big heart for vision. Amen. If you're here in the room right now and the Lord is starting to touch your heart about going to the missions field, just raise up your both hands to the Lord. Just raise up both your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch these people right now. Touch these people right now. An anointing for missions. Fire and passion for missions. Let the Holy Spirit come upon them. In the name of Jesus we pray. In the name of Jesus we pray. We release them to go. In due time. We release the funds. We release all the resources. In the name of Jesus we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you for your invitation. Let everybody raise their hands to the Lord. And we just pray Lord. That you turn this church even more into a sending church. We increase the anointing to send people. You increase the anointing to raise up and train missionaries. You renew the vision for mission, Lord. Renew it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Renew it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, lay hands on your neighbor right now. Let's lay hands on your neighbor. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch every person, every church member, and holy fire, Lord. Holy anointing from the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for anointing. Anointing for missions, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for a new generation of missionaries. Young people. 
Når jag är här. När det var oss det är Jesus Kristus i anu nå. We thank you for it. Så la kallen kastar han. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just left her hands to the Lord. Och gemma barsa så zerv kallar det. Thank you Lord Jesus. Usk sist när la kallar så när det är Lord. Så la kallar det. We worship you Lord. Se jer kall på gel. Jer kall på gumen kastar. Så la kallen kastar. Så la kallar hallelujah Jesus. Հառելույը � Գիտեք շատ անգամ մտացում ենք իրական միսյան դա միայն միատ ուրիշ երկիր գնալն է, բայց մի գուծ է, կողքի գյուղը գնալ է, կողքի կաղաքը գնալ, հարևանի նույնպես միսյա է, ինչ-որ բան որ դու պետք ակատարես և սա եկեղեցու խորդներից մեկն եմ։ Հաղորդունթյունը միասնում է ստեղծողին ստեղծվածի հետ։ Ոնց կարող ենք մենք միանանք իրականում ստեղծողին, որ մենք ստեղծագործույուն ստեղծված ենք, մեն գիտեք նյութականը միանում է հոգևորին։ Մենք նյութական այս կյանքում վերցնում ենք հոգևորը, Քրիստոսի մարմինը և արյունը։ Եվ ասող խոսկը շատը խոսում հաղորդության մասին, որ եվ որ հաղորդության � Չէ որ մենք երկուսով ընդրում ենք Քրիստոսի այրյունը և մարմինը վերցնում ենք, որ մենք այդ մարմնի անդանն ենք և այդ արյան մասնակիցնենք։ Ու եթե դու ունենաս ինչ-որ հակարակություն կոքուր, եղբոր հանդեպ, գիտես � Հիսուսը պատասխանեց նրանց և ասեց, 26 խոսքից, ճշմարիտ ճշմարիտ ասում եմ ձեզ, դուք ինձ որոնում եք ոչ թե նրա համար, որ նշաններ տեսակ, բայց որ հացը կերակ և կշտացակ, 
Gortsez ek vorste korcelu kira kuri hamar alain kira kuri vor menatsog e havitian ki anki mech vor marti vor tin kata zez vor tev asso astvats hayre kankets neram. Aiste khos kasuma mi matatsek vor tev hrash kira kata vel yev hatsere shat hatsere ay thati masin ay aveli matatsek ay thati masin vor havitian a se kinsa havitian em. Kide kai sor meng motenalo ves hagor tutiana meng versu meng kai hagor tutiana sa havite nakana Kristosi het kapa ye for du irog motenumes Kristosi ariana ye marmini ye verci te ga voruzum mite ga luzum kartan voruze to meng kagot engev kunang hagor tutiuna ara chikoren tati stas me kiro dulu chantar apes kosum hagor tutian masin shat ye skuzem kartan zes ara chikoren tati stas me kiro dulu kisan irot koskiz. Այդ եպ մեկ տեղ եք ժողովում սա տերունական ընտրիկ ուտել չի որ ամեն մեկի առաջին ընտրիկ է անում ուտելու ժամանակ եւ մեկը սովաց եւ մյուս արփած մի թե տուն չունեք ուտելու եւ խմելու կամ թե աստծո եկեղեցին արամարում եք եւ չկավորներին ամանչեսնում ձեզ ի՞նչ ասեմ գովեմ ձեզ այդ բանում չեմ գովում որովհետեւ ես տերից ընդունեցի այն որ ձեզ էլ ավանդեցի որ մեր տեր որ որ տեր Հիսուսը այն գիշեր որ մատնվում էր հացարավ եւ գոհանալուց հետո կտրեց եւ ասաց Արեք երեք այս էի մարմինը որ ձեզ համար կոտրվում է այս Արեքին հիշատակի համար այնպես էլ ընտրիկ ուտելուց հետո բաժակ առավ եւ ասաց այս բաժակը նոր ուղտն է իմ արյունը այս Արեք քանի անգամ որ խմեք իմ հիշատակի համար որովհետեւ քանի անգամ որ այս հացը ուտեք եւ այս բաժակը խմեք տիրոջ մահը պատմեցեք մինչե որ նա կգա ուրեմն ով է այս հացը ուտո ուտե կամ այս բաժակը Տիրոջ բաժակը խմե անարժանությամբ նա Պարտական կլինի Տիրոջ Մարմնին եւ Արյանը։ Ուրեմն թող մարդը փորձի իր անձը եւ ավային հացու ուտե եւ այն բաժակը խմե։ Որովհետեւ անարժանությամբ ու տողը եւ խմող իր անձի համար տատաստան է ուտում եւ խմում, որ չէ որոշում Տիրոջ Մարմինը։ Նրա համար ձեր մեջում շատ հիվանդներ եւ շատ ցավագիրներ կան եւ շատերն էլ ննջեր են։ Որովհետեւ եթե մեր անձը դատենք, չենք դատապարտվի, բայց դատերով տերից խրատվում ենք, որ աշխարի հետ չդատապարտվենք։ Ուրեմն եղբար, երբ ժողովեք ուտելու համար իրար սпасեք, ապա եթե մեկը սովաց է, թող իր տանը ուտե, որ դատապարտություն համար չժողովեք, բայց ուրիշ բաներ երբ կգամ, այն ժամանակ կպատվիրեմ։ Սա վերջացնում է Պողոս Արաքյալի իր թուղթը։ Գիտեք, հաջորդ շապատը մենք հավաքվելու ենք իր արդ տոնենք Քրիստոսի զատիկը։ Մեզ մոտ զատիկը այսինքն է երբ որ Քրիստոն Քրիստոսը մերելներից հարություն առավ նա խաչվեց ամեն մեկի համար եւ գիտեք ինչն է հետաքրքիր այս դահլիճում ոնց ասած կիրակյորա վերջի ծառայություն ենք անում հաջորդ շապարտ արդեն մյուս դահլիճում ենք լինելու այնտեղ ծառայություն ենք անելու բայց գիտեք սա հաղորդությունով մենք վերջացնում ենք այս շապատ եւ այս շապատը մեզ համար չի լինի սովորական շապատ չէ որ այս շապատվա մեջն էր որ քրիստոսը ծեցվում էր քրիստոսը հալածվում էր որ քրիստոսը մահանում էր եւ քրիստոսը գիտեք ինչ այս շապատը շատ կարեւոր էր մտածում ենք երբեր գեթսեմանյան գեթսեմանի աղօթը երբեր հալածանքները երբեր չարչարանքները դրա համար մենք այս շապատը չենք անցկացնելու սովորական ձևի Մեր եկեղեցին հատուկ ծոմը հայտարար է։ Այս շապատ մենք ծոմ մեջ ենք լինելու։ Չեմ ասում 7 օր բոլորը ծոմ են պայելու, բայց այս շապատվա մեջ գթի 1 օր եւ ծոմապահություն արա, աղոտ կարա, որովհետեւ մենք ծոմերով եւ աղոտներով պետքա մտենանք զատիկին եւ մենք ունենանք իրական հրաշալի զատիկ եւ տիրոջ այցելությունը կլինի։ Եվ շատ կարեւոր է որ սա մենք սկսենք հաղորդությունով։ Որովհետեւ ունենանք սուրբ հաղորդությունը մեր կյանքերի մեջ մոտենան քրիստոսի մարմինն եւ արյանը եւ ոչ մեկի դեմ ոչ մի բան չունենանք մի գուցե դու բողոքում ես մի գուցե մեկին քննադատում ես խնդրում եմ այսօր վերջացրու այդ բաները լինի գիտեք ինչ հոգեվոր կյանքում լինի քաղաքական դաշտում լինի ընդհանրապես անձնական բանում ոչ մի մարդու դեմ բան մի ունեցի որովհետեւ ասող խոս կասպա որ մեր պատերազմը մարմնի արյան հետ չի այլ երկնքում լինող իշխանությունները այսինքն սատանայի արքայության հետա բայց ոչ մարդկանց հետ եկեք այսօր խաղությամբ մտենանք հաղորդությանը ամեն եկեք բոլորս այսօր ոդքի կանգնենք սիրելներս եւ առաջինը ես ինչ կխնդրեմ որ մենք անենք եթե այսօր դու այստեղ ես եւ երբ եք քրիստոսին տեր չես ընդունել հոգյանքում ժամանակն է որ քրիստոսին տեր ընդունես առանց դրա դու չես կարող հաղորդությանը մտենաս ես ուզում եմ այդ աղօթ կանեմ եւ եթե դու առաջին անգամ ես տեղդ կանգնած այդ աղօթ կարա ինձ հետ միասին ասեք ինձ հետ միասին սիրելի հայր սիրելի հայ ես գալիս եմ քեզ մոտ ես գալիս եմ հիսուս քրիստոսի անունով խնդրում եմ քեզ եղնիմ տերը եւ իմ փրկիչը իմ կյանքը այսօր քո ձերքերի մեջ եմ տալիս ներերինց 
եւ մաքրինից կո սուրբ արյունով արժանացրինից կո հաղորդությանը փարք ես հիսուս ամեն մինչ կմտնանք հաղորդության եւ հայր մեր աղօթ կկասենք եկեք այս երկը եւս մեկ անգամ երկենք բայց դու քո ներսում աղօթ բարձացու տիրոջը եթե ինչ որ մեկի դեմ մի բան ունես ներեղություն խնդրու ասուն որպիսի տերը քեզ ների եւ հետո կմտնանք հաղորդությանը եթե ինչ որ մեղք ես գործես իրիս մեղքով մի մտեցի ներեղություն խնդրի տիրոջը մեղքերը թող ների աստված դավանի տիրոջ այդ մեղքերը եւ հետո մենք կմտնանք հաղորդությանը հալելույա պարզապես քո ներսի աղօթ կարա ասեք ինձ հետ միասին հայր մեր որ երկնքում ես քո անը սուրբ լինի քո արկայությունը գա քո կամ կլինի ինչպես երկնքում այնպես երկրի վրա մեր ամեն օրը հացը տուրմ ես այսօր եւ մեզ ների մեր պարտկերը ինչպես մենք ենք ներում մեր պարտապաններին ու մեզ փորձության մի տանի ապա չարից ազատի քանի որ քոնն է թակավորությունը զորությունը եւ փարկը հավիտյանս ամեն հալելույա գիտեք քրիստոսը վերցրեց հացը եւ կոտրեց այդ հացը ուրիշ խոսկերով այս հացի միաբանությունը կարելի է ասել հիմա կոտրվեց բայց երբ որ մենք ուտում ենք դառնում ենք մեկ մարմին իրար հետ միասին եւ մեկ արյուն ամեն հայրի մասված ես խնդրում եմ որպեսի դու օրդնես այս հացը եւ այս գինին որը քո մարմինն ու արյունն է եւ սան թունելուց հետո տերի մասված բարձրանա մեր գիտակցությունը դեպի միաբանությունը տերի մասված բարձրանա մեր միաբանությունը տերի մասված քես այդ որպիսի մենք ինչպես տկար անոթներ դառնանք հոգևոր անոթներ տերի մասված օրդնի այսօր այս հացը եւ գինին հանուն հոր եւ օրդու եւ սուրբ ու կանունով ամեն ես քնդրեմ հովներին կան այստեղ որ վերցնեն այստեղից հացը եւ գինին կխնդրեմ սերելներս երկու կողմերից գաք մեջ տեղից որ կանան դուրս գա մեջ տեղից մեկ եկ երկու կողմերից եկեք այստեղ եւ մենք ունենանք 